All right, welcome everyone to my streaming of my first impressions of Field of Glory Empires. So this game is not out yet. It's coming out, I believe tomorrow in about a day. I'm looking on the Steam page and they are doing one day, two hours. So right away close. So the first thing I wanted to kind of cover here is this is the uh, initial load screen here. You got a couple of scenarios you could choose from grand campaign and then you have this uh pyrus i'm not gonna be able to pronounce i gotta give you a heads up i'm not gonna be able to pronounce probably 99 percent of these names like torrentium probably get close to that but yeah just it is what it is i am gonna play the grand campaign because that's what i kind of played before and i uh i'm going to give you basically a lowdown for this game and uh show you what it's all about go right into it uh, now this game is made by I believe Ajod if I'm not mistaken yes the developers Ajod I am a huge fan of their previous games which include Civil War 2 and they made a World War 1 game and they made numerous games uh, Napoleon game I mean they just <laughs> <laughs> they made a game for every uh, facet. Now this is the uh, map. As you can see, it, it it's pretty big, right? It goes almost to the border of China here, India. You got the Middle East here, uh, Egypt going on, North Africa. Uh, good stuff. So, uh, a lot of countries to choose from. Like, this is no joke. This is a lot of countries to choose from. A lot of factions. Uh, I played Macedonia before because I love this. Uh, the death of Alexander Kasser... Cassander, oh, I got it. probably got that correct, took control of Macedon, but a sequence of civil wars and Gaelic invasions weakened the country in a period to 250 BCE. By this stage, descendants of Antigus ruled the state, and for the next half a century, Macedon, Macedonia became the major power in Greece. We'll see if I can live up to, uh, live up to that. So like I was saying about the Ajod games, uh, they made Civil War II, which I, f at this point find as the best Civil War game I've ever played. And I've played a lot of them. That game by far is the game I always go to whenever I want to get a great American Civil War experience. Now there's a couple other games uh, in the works like uh, American Civil War Grand... I forgot the uh, developer, uh, the name of the title. I think it's uh, called American Civil War 1861 to 1865. And that's being produced right now. It, Hopefully it comes out in 2019, and uh, that's going to be an interesting take on this award. Anyway, talking about Field of Glory Empire, so let's go right into this. So this is the new Ajod engine. If you're familiar with Ajod games before, you're going to look at this and say, holy shit, this is different. <laughs> and it's a very welcome change. I do love the Ajod maps before, the Ajod UI. It was... I thought it was nice. This is nicely refined. It's clean, you know, and I really do like it. It's 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 clean. It's elegant. It's, it's honestly beautiful. I, I gotta admit, it's really beautiful. So, you know, I know a lot of people don't really care how much of how the UI works. I do. I paid particular attention because it's basically art, right? So. Let's see, uh, I mentioned the UI. Now the map, I wanna kinda go over. It's a nice map. You know, it's, you know, it has nice textures here. It's not like, you know, it's not f heavily, you know, graphical uh, intensive like some other games. I I'm just gonna say like, I'm gonna compare this game a little bit to Imperator because this is kinda like the year of Rome. Historical Gamer, uh, it's another YouTuber, was mentioning like basically this is the year of Rome because everybody's coming out with a Rome game and the two juggernauts is Paradox and Slytherin slash Matrix games. So that's the publisher for this game. And so like I, I'm comparing this to Imperator, the you know strategic mode here on Imperator, the graphics were much more, I would say, refined, much more detailed. So it's not where Imperator is in terms of the graphics on the map, but that's okay because there's a lot of other things this game has. 
So a couple of things, uh, when you click on this, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, it's very easy to kind of jump through the main parts here. This is how you're gonna kind of control your nation. And you can kind of focus your nation very easily. So you have these kind of things on the right hand side where you can focus your province to be more, I would say building agricultural, you can do that. You can have them focus more on buildings and harbors. I usually click on, where is this bloody thing? Not healthcare, <laughs> not focusing on healthcare. Uh, there was one for money. Okay, maybe I'm missing it here. Whatever I want. Could have sworn I saw something in the last one when I was doing this before. Macedon. I may have not done this right. I remember seeing one here before for like. Uh, you can focus on like getting money. Oh my bad, it's on this side, rare. So you can focus on commerce and extra money and you can see it reassigns the population here to focus more on that. And you can go into each one and, and kind of like set that up, which is really cool. I like that, it's nice and kind of takes away from a little bit of that micromanagement. Sometimes like, you know, especially running an empire, you don't want to kind of do all that. A couple other things I wanted to see, uh, this is the unit selection here. Very easy to add, uh, right click I think, yep. And you could just add in a bunch of other ones. Kind of gives you some of the stats here. Cost, upkeep, money, manpower, all that good stuff. Heavy infantry. I like some of these sprites, they're really cool. Kind of reminds me of uh, 300 right there, right? So, let's see. And then you can make ships, light warships, heavy warships, and just warship. <laughs> So a lot of things to choose from. I'm assuming because there's uh, some extra tiles here, you, you could probably add in more. Let's see, and then you can go into the region here. I was able to kind of, this is where you can kind of uh, basically build new buildings. So you can hit a marketplace and find out what all that's about and uh, you can build stuff. So here I usually build first, let's do that. Quick, simple. Oh. Do the disassembly. What am I doing here? I know I've seen this before. Ranch, where is this bloody thing? Nope. Kind of missing it here. I know there's a quick and easy way to find the bloody uh, thing to make stuff. There was an icon here. I'll have to find it again. I remember there's an icon where you could just click to build. I guess not. Uh, I'll have to find it anyway. So other co a couple of cool things. Uh, one other pro that I wanted to mention: the stats are quick and easy to kind of understand. I, as you can see here, kind of breaks it down very easy. Plus 23, plus 11, so you know you're getting metal, all that good stuff. To move units is pretty intuitive. You kind of select a guy, and as you can see, you get that green whatever <laughs> arrow there and I'm at war with this guy so I'm probably gonna send some troops there and get a little nice animation uh, I'll probably have this guy meet up actually you know what stand by here because I don't want them to flank me they do have an army I can't see it but they're there and yeah so <laughs> I don't want to make the same mistake I made last time other cool things that I wanted to mention uh, I mentioned the map oh this is something that, you know, I know a lot of people don't mention, but the WASD keys are mapped properly. Now, I know it's a small thing for some people, but that's a big thing for me. There's some games that I play where they're not mapped properly, and you have to, like, go, you know, and push your mouse on left or right, which it works in this game, too. So if you want to use the mouse to kind of push on the sides of the screen, you can, or maybe just the up and down arrows. I love the WASD keys. They're kind of take over my left hand and it's easier to do that. It's a small thing, but I do like that. It's it's that attention to detail. I think all strategy games should have the WASD key uh, mapped that way. All right, uh, I'm gonna show you, let's see, I'm gonna actually order some more units. I think I did that already. All right, so I'm gonna show you what a turn looks like. So let's hit and turn, see what that all that's about. Now, it's very similar to the way AEJOD system worked before. As you can see, it goes from 0 to 100. And you can 
can see their army of 82 there. And then it does this, runs through the AI, kind of similar to uh, Rome a little bit. That kind of goes through all the nations. Oh, man. Now, one thing I did notice about this game is I only play Macedon first, right? Macedonia, whatever. And I noticed as every turn went through, like, I had a different country declare war on me. Now, I don't know if that's historically accurate. I didn't play the... Uh, another country which i'm going to try that out in another uh, session but i didn't notice that i don't know if they see uh, the ai senses blood in the water and if it does that's props to the ai uh the ai is good in this game it's challenging uh they kicked my ass uh <laughs> i'm not surprised by that but uh, now i'm going to tell you something about the ai on the tactical section so the big thing about this game that separates it from imperator is you have a strategic component but you're gonna see in a second that once I hit this turn and this guy heads over to this guy, you're gonna see something else happen. And it kind of separates it from the other grand strategy game by Paradox, because kind of adds a little bit of a nice thing there. So I'm at war with uh, the Athens, get out of here, seriously. All right, that's not good. Oh, are you kidding me? Everybody's getting in right away. All right, um, probably, let me just, uh, for this game, at least let me build a couple more guys. All right, uh, I'm probably going to want some cavalry. I can't. Stables and stable masters I need. Okay. Probably want to do that. Let's see if I can build some stables and stable masters. Public works. Bloody, I forgot how to daggone do this. Ranch is being requested in this region. There we go. All right, so that's where the button, the ranch one popped up. It was kind of weird. Uh, so here you can choose from all your guys here. I want a stable, right? Because I guess, will this give me a stable? Monument, blacksmith, solid walls, marble. We'll slightly embrace the farms. solid walls let me do that actually because i'm gonna probably get overwhelmed all right so we got that going on and we'll show you uh one other thing i wanted to show you before we go into the heavy portion of this first impressions is one cool thing that i'm hoping i can remember you can click escape nope nope not that way maybe is it here options ah See where it says change faction? This is really cool. I like that you can, in mid-game, you can click change faction and I can play as the Athenians and kind of go on the winning side of this war. <laughs> so that was really cool. It's a nice pro. I like that little uh, that little thing that you can do right there. Because um, if especially when Macedon's against the ropes, you're like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Athenians because, yeah. All right, so uh, I'm gonna move this guy. He's gonna handle south actually you know what head there and you can see the AI kind of moving north it's okay I'm gonna chase him down so it's gonna probably be another turn before I can grab that guy I know what he's doing though because they he did that in the last uh, <laughs> last uh, game all right, uh, ooh, why are you not there yet? Ah, 99% of the way. And this guy's going that way. All right, let me see. Oh, another thing I wanted to kind of, I'm just going right through my pro list. The other thing that I want to kind of mention, clicking this, this is the event list here. I do like it. It's nice and big. It takes up a good size of the screen, and the text is, uh, my eyes are getting like shitty, right? This is uh, very much readable, okay? So when I'm looking at this, I don't have to like squint or uh, it's not like, 
it doesn't make me kind of like kind of have to put my face closer to the screen. There's some games that have an event list and sometimes I have to like kind of move, get closer to the screen and, and read it and it becomes just too frustrating so I kind of get rid of it. So I do like it that they made it for us old, getting older people, right? So wanted to measure that. Uh, before I kind of continue here, I want to like lay down a few cons here. Okay. So a couple of things I did notice. It's a hands-off trading system from what I see. Maybe I haven't been able to kind of find it yet. But like, so you have manufactured trade goods, natural trade goods. These are imported. Uh, but I don't see a way I can kind of I don't know, set stuff up with other countries. Like I'm not at war with this guy. So I can't figure out a way to kind of like to diplomacy, to armies, trade details. And then when I go here, it just gives me these kind of um, abilities. So yeah, it's a pretty much hands-off trade system. So the AI kind of manages that. I mean, you, you develop you know, your resources and the AI kind of handles the rest. Whether that's a con or a pro, some people will see it as a pro, so you don't have to handle the trade system. Sometimes the trade system is kind of like overbearing, especially when you're trying to take over the world. So kind of right in the mi middle right there. The diplomacy system, this is a pro, I wanted to mention here is you, you have a nice uh, mix of options here. You have invite emissary, uh, I haven't tried that yet. Invite their emissary or perhaps humiliate them. In the most extreme case, kill one or two of their envoy. Ooh, I haven't done that. That is actually real cool. I might have to do that. <laughs> Just to piss them off or see what happens. Insult emissary. So I got... Yeah, well, why not? <laughs> Clearly are too focused on the present time, but what of your legacy? So you got a couple other cool things. Uh, you could obviously do an alliance, declare war. I could have this guy kind of, uh, I am at war with the these guys. So I can click on that and have them do that. So yeah, uh, comes in handy. So the diplomacy system, it's, it's there, it's good. Uh, I it's simple and like I said it's not there are a few things that uh, are not like if you if you're kind of trying to compare it to is that not popping up? there we go if you that do that the one thing I didn't notice is like sometimes I don't know if it's do I right click it thinking you did it so that that that's a other thing that I noticed uh, is like when I want to make peace with a nation right I tried this before doing that. let's try it here so when you click peace you want to settle peace with the other nation they have a few turns to accept or reject your offer each side will keep the territories so final peace chance eight percent but when I click on it kind of Viewing as Macedon, right? You got the top there. And is that requests? It says no requests. Requests and our answers. So I'm assuming it, it's because it says no request. It's not sending requests. Or maybe do I have to select these? Maybe. Peace. Did it send a request? So there's a little bit of confusion there. I'm not able, I'm gonna maybe have to flesh it out or play with it a little bit more. But at, like right away in, the, in my last play test, I couldn't figure out if it if it's sending something to them. You know, in, uh, I guess maybe in another, uh, in like Imperator, I notice like if I request peace, you know, it'll tell me no. And then if I click on it, it'll say no kind of thing. So I don't know if, if they're just saying no with that or if I'm not sending a proper request. But anyway, let's get to the meat of this. Because actually this guy has to go to the other side. Oh, it's 
guys out. That's weird. Uh, I don't know why this guy's taking a little bit to get there. Ah, okay. Am I not at peace with these guys now? Ah, okay. So it looks like I'm on peace. Wasn't on peace last turn. Alright, so. Alright, cool. Guess I'll have to show you against the other guys. So we'll move south. This one was at war with that guy, because I remember in the last game I was automatically at war with them. So. I guess I'm probably gonna have to show you with this army here. I'm gonna get slaughtered, but it's fine. I'll have to save the big battle for the end, right? So uh, it looks like the Athenian sends. Really? Combat power four, two units against my four, really? All right, we'll see how that works out. So these guys send some soldiers over to me, right? And one thing you could do, you could hit view battle, right? You can hit the report, which. This kind of takes you to like a, a well, actually, let's do this. So it kind of gives you a heads up. So in this section here, you have like a strategic sections view here. Um, basically, all you can do here is skip forward, hit start play, and that's basically it. So you don't really have direct control over this, at least as far as I know, I wasn't able to do really anything. So clicking, nothing really happened. So it's really just... Kind of gives you some stats here, but I guess maybe that's why they're trying to attack me because they got some good infantry that didn't really didn't stand up really well. <laughs> I got uh, peasants with pitchforks taking on infantry, doing a good job out of it. I guess because maybe they're flanking. So I won the battle. Now, one thing that I wish they would have added, which I would have to say is, uh, like I, I wish they would have added is a retreat system. So there's numerous times I get on the battlefield and I'm like just totally, totally outnumbered, like 15 to one, right? I would love a little icon here to like retreat and give my guys a possibility of surviving some guys. So I literally slaughtered all of them. So that's good. And I'm bring my army south. Take on these Athenians. I'm trying to remember what uh, are there in 300. I remember they made a reference to the Athenians. I remember it wasn't a good reference. <laughs> All right, so, uh, let's click. Uh, I'm still making troops. Oh, uh, I can show you another cool thing. Uh, where is it? Uh, let's select army here so to merge two units together you just click merge and just like that quick easy you got like cards of your soldiers it's almost like a board game kind of thing where you have like uh kind of gives you their value combat value hit points things like that so it's almost like a board game counter kind of thing in terms of managing your recruits and you get a couple cool options you could split them of course assault a fortified structure garrison them pillage and pillaging will go into affecting the ethnicity. So in Macedonia, you can see there's 89 Hel Hellenic and 11% Balkanic, right? Now, this goes to the ethnicity of the actual region. So this is going to affect production. So for example, if I conquered this entire area, obviously they're not gonna be too cool with that, right? So you're gonna have to deal with like possibly revolts I'm assuming and I'm probably not going to get as the production that I'm looking forward to all right oh sh okay so I'll show you what well, I want to do on this one I want to do when my main army gets there let's go to battle so you can see they got a nice massive army Let's go to the continuous place, so just go back to it. 
I'm doing better in this one, surprisingly. <laughs> in this game session than my last one. Well, I figured I wasn't going to survive that. Now, the one thing I was hoping that I could... Uh, One thing I, I was hoping for is like, I had four units here. I was hoping that these guys, I'm hoping they did some damage, take some casualties that I can, you know, affect down the road. But it doesn't look like, okay, minus one effectiveness. Okay, so they did, they did take some losses. Not much. Ooh, they took minus two in, in effectiveness. Okay, so it looks like... Now, the one thing I did... I do want to kind of mention, uh, this is also a con. Everything is measured not by the actual population number, right? It's an artificial value. And I, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to say this is a con, because some people like it, some people don't. Me, personally, I like uh, actual values. And what I mean by that is, like, heavy infantry unit, right? Let's say on a legion, I think it was like, what, a thousand soldiers? I'm trying to remember. But let's say a thousand soldiers for a legion, a heavy infantry legion, right? This is cataloged by three hits and effectiveness two, right? So it's not, how do I say? Oh, oh, nice. Okay, so I could actually show that. So like I was saying, it... it, it it doesn't go based upon the troop strength that you have, the morale, things like that. It's it's a little bit more simple, uh, simpler than that. So it's not like you're not going to get 95,000 troops in the Macedonian army. You're going to get a combat strength of 93. So it's a little different. I know they did that in Civil War II, which I was totally fine with. Uh, I know there was like a button or two that you could press and it kind of gave you the actual numerical versions. But, you know, to each his own, I do like that. Some people like just having the artificial uh, troop number of like 60 combat power, you know, to each his own. Now, this is where I want to show you the kind of the sweet spot of this game. So, you see where it says export battle? Here, now you have to own Field of Glory 2, which is a separate game, all right? You buy this game. You also need to own Field of Glory 2. Um, this game is... Uh, I have to get the actual price before the end of this video. But uh, Field of Glory 2 is... I'm trying to go on Steam and figuring it out. $29.99. Cool. So Field of Glory 2 is $29.99. You would need that to do this. So I'm going to hit Export Battle. You're going to see this happening. Override exported battle, uh, yeah, because I already did that in the last play session. So you're gonna do that. Uh, battle exported, yes. So then click that. Uh, also going on Steam to get the price for empires. All right, so when you do that, uh, what it does, it doesn't load the game automatically. You have to kind of exit out of that. Uh, it does put up the game launcher. So, and then you have to play game. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a price for this. Uh, for Fill the Glory Empires that I see. Okay, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna hit battles, right? And then you see where it says Empire's Battles. You're gonna click on that. Now, mind you, you need to update Field of Glory 2. If you own it, you have to update it. It's a massive file, it's like 500 megs. Of, massive file for me. <laughs> I know some of you guys have like one gigabit down or higher, so like that's probably a blink of an eye actually. It'll probably take you longer to blink than getting that, right? So what I'm trying to say is you need to download Field of Glory 2. That bo a button, Export Battle, will not pop up. I had to do a little um, work to find that out because I went through the, like, the manual and it says that it's available, you know, that you can export the battle. 
and I didn't update Field of Glory 2, so I was kind of like going all over the place, and I was kind of like, like pull, almost like pulling my hair out, like, am I missing something? And then I went in and I updated Field of Glory 2 just by chance. I'm like, I wonder if I need to update this, which I did, and it just automatically pops up. So here, I'm gonna close now. One pro that I want to kind of put out there is playing Field of Glory Empires kind of made me kind of realize how awesome Field of Glory 2 is because I got to admit, I love this thing here, this um, tactical simulator. And them working together is really, really cool. And it does work very nicely. It's not like perfect but it works nicely in the transition. There's a few things I'll, I'll mention that uh, don't work very seamlessly, but uh, it's it, it, it works good enough to, to get a thing. And I'll, and I'll mention a few things. Like, so if you look at this unit right here, right? If you look at the bottom, it says strength 988 out of 988, so a thousand troops. But when this flips over to the strategic side, that doesn't translate because you don't have an actual numerical strength there. You have an artificial value. So I've noticed that doesn't translate very well. Uh, I noticed units that uh, kind of routed off the battlefield in the strategic side were just dead. And it would have been nice if they routed off the battlefield that, you know, like they're still alive and I can kind of uh, form them back up. But so uh, let's see, uh, I'm gonna just show you a few things. I know I have more troops, so I, should, I really don't have to go too crazy here. Uh, let's do that. I am gonna do a little flanking maneuver. Try to do this last time, I didn't do it right. We'll check this out now. Oh, that's the general. I don't want him going on. All right, and then my infantry. These guys are superior quality. Ooh, I want them. So, where would you put your superior troops? I, I don't want them in the front. These guys are gonna. So, yeah, I, I want them in the back then. The. Uh, Quality superior, ooh, somewhat disheartened. So, I'm gonna, ooh. Put the superior troops in front. I mean, in the back, my bad. I'll put the uh, less motivated guys in the front. <laughs> yeah, somewhat disheartened, that's okay. And you'll cover my flank. You'll cover my flank. And then you guys, yep, yeah, you're gonna cover the flank because you're not, you're not very happy, are you? And then I'll have the general up here. Ooh. These guys are cannon fodder. These light cavalry is just going to be, you know, I can use you as cannon fodder for these guys. So, one cool thing I like about this thing is uh, if the enemy that's going to show up here, I'm going to use this cavalry to kind of flank around them. See, so go like this and then hit them from behind while my guys hit them in the front. Try that last time, it didn't work so well. <laughs> the AI in this game is good. In uh, the tactical portion here, it's, it's really good. The strategic portion, I did notice. Yeah, I would have to say it, it is good because I notice in my first game session, I sent like a small army uh, to the north. Those guys I was telling you about before. I sent them north. Yeah, moving in. And I didn't realize there was an enemy army up there because I, I didn't scout it and uh, I didn't. I just figured there was no fog of war. And it was like combat power of like 23 versus like 80 so they got slaughtered as soon as that army got slaughtered i noticed all these nations just started declaring war 
So, yeah. It's one of those kind of things. Uh, you know, let's chill right there. Oh, one cool thing I like about this, you can just click move whole command instead of me click festing it. Oh, oh, I didn't want to do all that, so I should have put I forgot you can do undo move. Nice. Forgot about that. And one thing I know about this game is they uh, take a lot of things uh, into account, like, you know, terrain uh, values. So here, like, this guy. Oh, could you? That was weird. He just couldn't move a second ago. That was weird. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a little bit of this battle. Back to the strategic side. Now, the one big pro that I want to mention in this, because this tactical side is huge. And what I mean by that is if you have a small army, like right now, like let's say, let's pretend this is like maybe 20,000 soldiers. Let's pretend they take most of the field. Like let's say they have 80,000. If you're that good of strat strat tacti a tactician, Damn, my words, shit. Uh, if you're that good of a tactician and you know how to kind of like, you know, put in a great strategy and kind of like just put the enemy on the wall and, you know, just do kind of like a, let's say, uh, there's a good general. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant, you know, kind of thing. Or if you want to, if you could do like, I'm trying to think of another good general. I was going to say Montgomery, but I know some of you guys are going to be like, what? So what I'm trying to say, if you can outgeneral them with a smaller force and kind of send them running, that's you can do this with this tactical simulator. It kind of takes that strategic component because in that strategic component, you're just kind of like rolling the dice. It's kind of like going to Vegas, right? If you throw $50,000 on the table, right? It all comes down to that dice. Well, in that because this game has this tactical component, it doesn't work that way, right? It comes more down to skill at that point, right? To how you implement your strategy. Now, I have more troops in this battle, but if my strategies suck, you know, I'm going to lose. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm trying to find an analogy to kind of compare that to, uh, but I can't think of one. <laughs> Full command. Ah, bloody. Units. Uh, another pro that I wanted to mention. This is this is another huge pro that I have to let you guys know is by you owning Field of Glory Two. If you already own this game, you literally are getting double the value out of this game now, right away. Like if you play Field of Glory Two and you say, you know what, I'm gonna get Field of Glory 2 Empires because I do want like a strategic component, that literally doubles the value of this game, right? You bought it and you were like, oh, this game is great, I, I get a lot of tactical simulators, and then when you buy Field of Glory Empires, you get literally double the value because there's so much more you can do with this. It incorporates into a whole nother game, which I think is pretty sick. Uh, but I think the genius of this game is honestly, the fact that this tactical simulator, it really is, really is awesome. I, 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 you gotta throw those little, yeah, you are. One cool thing I love about Field of Glory 2 Empires is like, I just lost 15 guys there. They gotta throw those little freaking sticks at me. I love seeing actual numerical values. So 15 guys, I understand. 12 guys, I can understand, right? Four guys, eh, I didn't take anything there. So I can understand those values, right? I don't understand um, my army of 15 lost four value. Okay, so 
11 now. So it's like, okay, no big deal. But if I took an army of 20,000 and I lost, let's say, six or 7,000, like in my head, that works out like, damn, dude, I lost six to 7,000 men. That's like a good quarter of my army, man. That's, that's nuts. So it, it, it works out differently in my head. Let's do some skirmishers. Try, I'm gonna throw wooden sticks back at you. Who's all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna frack you guys up. Let's let's get the cavalry in on this. So I just want to show you some of this gameplay action. And my apologies, I'm literally just getting lost in this game. And that's the thing about Field of Glory 2 is your brain keeps like, what kind of strategy should I employ here? What should I do here? What should I do there? You know, I love... Let's do that. Kick the... Cr Are you kidding me? Worthless sacks of... are in my way you frackers just do it Now, the one thing I also wanted out of this Field of Glory 2, which I haven't been able to find, it was a, a battle where I was losing, and I was like, you know, pretty much done. Like, I, 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 like, I lost, I'm slaughtered. And I was trying to find, like, the retreat button, or withdraw button. I couldn't figure, I, I couldn't find one. So, like, that was the other thing. And I was kind of like, I know there's, like, a, a way to kind of just get out of this and just go back to, um, what do you call it, the uh, main screen. But I was worried that it might interrupt the whole exporting and importing process or it might not, like if I click quit, will that trigger a retreat or will that just be an incomplete game? So it's kind of like wondering about that. That's good vibes. Donnie, I'm coming for you. So, if you guys can see what I'm doing here, uh, I think my strategy is working out. I, I love being able to find charge queen. Oh, nice. Yeah, you better run. Alright. You can see I'm getting really into this. <laughs> so, I'm going to probably end this in a second and we'll head back to the strategic side. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little flavor of this and how... <laughs> I really love this uh, Phil Glory too.
it's like little things I like about Field of Glory too. So like, I attacked him on his flank. You can see his unit kind of broke off a little bit of their troops, and then formed uh, like a flanking. I got a break in a second. Breaks routing, nice. Just curious now. Um, Alright. So I'm pretty much just gonna... I'm gonna save it here. Oh, damn, I can't save it. And I wanna kinda go through this whole thing because this literally... I will give you a heads up. This battle, like, playing this from start to finish, I'm not gonna do it here because I, I know you guys don't have two, three hours. Because this by itself, once I get all these guys engaged, the cavalry engaged... And just go slugfest. We're looking at probably maybe like another hour, hour and a half, something like that. So I'm just going to do this. I'm probably going to hate myself for doing that because I'm doing good on this one. But, you know, I, I have to. Let's see if the uh, battle actually export. I don't think it did. And the only reason it because I, I didn't finish it. So, so what we would do is if it did it properly, it would actually boot this up here, which is the gameplay thing. And then import battle results. Ah, oh, I'm gonna gonna be like because <laughs> I you know I could easily have kicked the AI's ass there my cavalry is doing their job this time they finally got through and uh, <laughs> yep figured I got slaughtered I would have won damn it son of a biatch damn it oh <laughs> shoot all right, you see what kind of uh, sacrifice I'm doing for you guys. I just want to point that out. <laughs> so another cool thing I wanted to mention is in the tactical combat, you can have other armies join. In the last game that I was playing, another army, while I was kind of getting beat like to a pulp, another army joined the battle. I don't know where they came from, but it was kind of cool. So yeah, I got I got slaughtered pretty pretty savagely there. All right, so. Let's look at other things. Now, as you can see, oh yeah, you, you can see I lost a massive army right there. You already see more people gang, ganging up on me, these guys. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, and I wish they would do this, is relationships, right? This is kind of... This Russian war may, happy, uh, may happen soon. I was in... That's the way. Okay, now that works. Uh, I wasn't able to find that before. I wasn't looking for it properly. Um, okay. So we covered that. We covered that. There is a character system in this game. Yes, you heard me right. There is actually a character system. So when you click on an army, you have Nicholas, and you can change him up. And as you can see, you have uh, a few. You have no leader, which. I'm assuming is not good for your army. <laughs> you don't get those uh, bonuses during combat. Uh, and you have an age system, right? So this guy's 32 years old. His offensive rating is one, defensive rating. They got special abilities like he's a flanker. Uh, movement bonus plus one entire stack. Oh, I might actually want to keep that guy around. And you got a siege expert. So... I wanted to point this out because, like, you do have Imperator, right, which actually has a, a huge character system. I would say that's a good section of the game. I would say probably almost like a third of that game is character system, where you have characters that marry, uh, you have characters that make money on the side through businesses, distrust, you could put somebody in jail. I mean, it's, a, it's an in-depth system. So this one's a little bit, uh, I would say, it, it's not as fleshed out as that one. Now... I'm not going to say like that's a con or anything like that. And the reason being is because if you don't want to deal with a character system, you do not have to, right? Like this is an easy character system. You can be like, all right, uh, I like this guy. 
and just click it, right? That's the extent that you're going to be dealing with characters, you know? I do like that mix because if you don't want to, if you don't want to deal with a character system, you could just do this, and it will ha you will have a general that's in charge of your army, all right? But you don't have to be like, all right, is general making money on the side? Is his married uh, married married life good? Does he have kids? You know, kind of thing. You don't have to worry about that. Some people don't want to deal with that, so I just wanted to point that out. So. Garbage at this point. Five units, combat power three. So let's have you go home. Is that 109? Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Not good. <laughs> and then we'll merge with this guy. All right. So I, let's just. I wanted to make sure I cover all this stuff. Oh. I did want to mention this. So, I wrote a note here that in my last game, going from tactical to strategic mode, I believe I lost. Yeah, I lost the battle. In the tactical simulator, it said it said I lost about forty to forty eight percent of the army. But then when I switched it to strategic side, right? Can't say words tonight. <laughs> It showed that I lost like over three quarters, like 70, 75%. And I noticed like, wait, I only lost like half my units, less than half my units in the tactical component. And then in the strategic side, it said I lost over three quarters. And I'm like, it was just kind of like a missynchronization. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. Uh, that's something you might run into. They might fix that also. This is a day before release, so there might be a patch coming. So I just want to mention that. Uh, I did mention the no retreat. I wish there was a retreat in the strategic and tactical side. I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about it. I don't see any other things that I can. Uh, there's also, um, I forgot to mention, if you go up here, uh, you also have the guy who's running your country. You can see his health and stuff like that. Uh, you also have other things that you can do here, decisions. Uh, you can click that. And then kind of gives you things like that. Objectives, nation traits, modifiers. Right, so it's nice. Kind of gives you a kind of overview of everything. So wars I'm losing, army strength shrinking. I do like this. You know, it kind of like throws everything in the game in one spot. My people's loyalty is 84, which is okay. 13 citizens it's shrinking. It, and I know that for me this is a pro because I I do like this. Uh, it it's one stop shop, and I like that. So, just wanted to mention that. Uh, you also have different countries. You have a stable mon monarchy, and if you hit the, if I hit the turn thing, which I'll do one more time, you can see there are republics like Rome right, right now is a republic. Uh, and I think that's about it. Uh, I mentioned that it's easy to manage population goals. So I showed that in the first part of the game. Uh, mentioned challenging AI. Oh, uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but it's uh, quick and easy to understand the stats. So I think I kind of point that out already, but it is like when you click on something, it's just quick, simple, easy to kind of understand. It's not overload. So I did want to mention that. Uh, and I would say probably the two last pros that I wanted to kind of put out there is this is just as a big fan of AJOT. I really love this engine. I really do. It's... It's, it's, it's much more streamlined, smooth. Uh, I do like that uh, compared to the previous games like Civil War II where you click end turn and, and it, it's probably like 10, 15 minutes for that end turn to process. This is much more faster. Uh, it's cleaner. I feel it's just more snappier. So that's really cool. I like this. I'm very excited to see this maybe apply to Civil War Three. Just putting that out there. Uh, hey, John, just putting that out there. All right. And... 
this is my final pro and this is kind of also going to sum up this game okay so it is easier to manage your nation than like imperator right like if you're playing imperator uh it's much more in depth right when you're managing your nation you gotta worry you know well you gotta manage your production uh loyalty of individual characters you got to you know manage your navy what kind of ships you're building the our generals leading it uh, are the armies getting too attached to that general there it's it, there's so many things going on in Peritor. and honestly i love that you know like for me that's that's amazing i love that in Peritor is just with stuff like that is it's amazing there's so much stuff to do but there's some times that like you know i want to play an ancient rome game maybe an ancient greece game but i don't want to go to too much detail right like there's some times where i want to play a world war ii game i don't want to go to hearts of iron because i'm going to have to invest like three four weeks maybe even months into the game because there's that much stuff there well i can play strategic command 2 and finish a world war ii game in a weekend and this is kind of like that i want to use that analogy right this I would say uh, Field of Glory Empires is not going to take you months to to finish. I mean, you possibly could, maybe, uh, depending if you know, uh, maybe if you change factions and. But overall, I don't feel like this is going to take you months to like to finish, right? It's not. You know, you can kind of go through these regions, conquer these territories. I would say if you're playing it a couple hours a day, you'll, you'll probably finish it in you know a couple days, maybe a week, right? So I do like that because if you want to play an ancient, you know, civilization game, Rome games, uh, Greece game, you don't have to set aside months or weeks to play the game. You could just pick this up. Uh, you don't have to work on the tactical you don't have to pick up the tactical simulator right you don't have to you could just auto uh, play each game so uh, like i was showing you earlier so i do like that now if you do want to kind of extend this game even weeks and months you could with that tactical element so it, it kind of is like right in between you know it's a hybrid you know it's 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 not like strategic command it could be right and it's not like the full flesh heart to iron right it, it it can be all three right it could be as quick as playing uh an entire ancient game in three four days you know it could be really long if you do the tactical component and it lasting like probably at that point weeks if not months right or you could do a middle right where you can just play the big battles and honestly that's what i see a lot of people doing with the tactical component like two armies smashing into each other if you have like a combat strength of three and a combat strength an enemy combat strength of six and they smash into each other you're probably not going to want to go through that whole process of hitting clicking export getting out of this game loading the other game playing going through that whole thing it's a little bit tedium to kind of do that each and every time uh, i do hope that they kind of flesh it out so both these games kind of when you just click export it automatically has the other you know game loaded and it's just ready to go it's just instant without having to close out the programs and all that stuff i do hope they do that but i i can see it for big battles like you just saw i did a, a massive battle with two major armies right i can i would do it for those i wouldn't do it for the smaller ones uh, but basically that's my sum up of this game it can be a casual grand strategy game right this can be a casual grand strategy uh ancient uh strategy game so i i i do feel that's it's a, it's a really nice position for this game to be in um because you know, Imperator, you, you, I guarantee you, you start Imperator, right? You, if you think you're going to finish that in a weekend, forget about it. You're not going to. You, if you, I mean, even if you, you literally have to put it on very, very fast and just, and just like literally, you would have to go all out, like just keep pressing keys, just click fest away and you're probably not going to get much done. You'll probably be dead before you know it. Um, so you're not going to get really much done. This game you know, you can actually play in a couple of days and uh, finish it out. 
So I'm going to end it like with that. So uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this. Uh, for those of you that have Field of Glory 2, you're gonna really, you're gonna really love this. Uh, I do encourage you if you own Field of Glory 2, pick up this game. It, it's gonna just extend the life of your Field of Glory 2. It's gonna add so much more to it because uh, now you can have a strategic level for your Field of Glory 2. And for you guys that just wanted to just buy Field of Glory Empires and, you know not have to pick up field of glory 2 for an extra 30 bucks you can do that you know and have a nice casual grand strategy game where you can kind of go around the world and you know and kind of take it on and don't have to go into the nuts and bolts of, of uh and every fine detail so really cool like it uh i do recommend picking it up based on that uh and i hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions uh i'm going to do another kind of like review uh, on my podcast that I do with Historical Gamer and Tortuga Power on the Single Malt Strategy Podcast, which you can find on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the good stuff. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this. I will catch you in the next one.